648, the Smithsonian is asking for your help to preserve the spacesuit Neil Armstrong wore when he became the first person to walk on the moon 46 years ago this week. It's currently in a climate-controlled storage area to prevent it from deteriorating. Now, the Smithsonian's goal is to raise $500,000 to restore the suit and put it back on full display by 2019. Hi again and good morning everyone. Thanks for waking up with the Valley today. I'm Lisa Badeau here with Kyle Bosch. 12 minutes before 7 o'clock and we're starting our nonstop news and weather to the top of the hour to help you plan your day. No drop in property taxes for Fargo City residents, at least not for now. City Commissioner Tony Gehrig was proposing a 20% cut in Fargo property taxes, which he says would still allow for growth in the city. Now, Gehrig says that while Fargo's tax levy has remained the same, a 12% increase in property values means that homeowners have been having to pay more. However, a majority of commissioners felt that the move to pass the tax cuts now would be premature. Mayor Tim Mahoney is expected to present his budget in just a couple of weeks and would have had to rebuild it if the tax cut had passed now. You can't blindly cut 20% from the budget. That's people, that's services, that's different things you want. So it's the commission's responsibility to figure out what they want. I think we do a pretty good job, and we're just going to have to look and see what comes out of it. The people you hurt the most when you have a spike like this, working class, young families, which we want to attract to the city of Fargo, and people on fixed incomes, elderly people. I don't think we should ask the, to, to raise these funds on their backs. Commissioners Gehrig and Dave Pepcorn voted for the cut. Melissa Sobolik, Mike Williams, and the mayor voted against it. We're following a developing story out of Bismarck. A couple is in jail after a relative discovered the family living in a storage locker and brought the children to police. Yeah, police say a two-year-old and nine-month-old twins had respiratory problems. The twins also had severe rashes, bite marks, and bruises. 33-year-old Victor Rios and 31-year-old Katie Myers have now been charged with felony child neglect. Rios is also facing drug charges. 651, coming up on 651, time to get a look at weather and traffic on the ones. We turn it over to meteorologist Robert Hahn. Lots of sunshine out there. Sun continues to rise up higher in the sky and temperatures will be rising up well into the 70s and 80s as we head through this afternoon. Right now, cool start to the day, 57 degrees. Winds out of the south and southwest at 3. They'll swing around to the south and the southeast. Remaining on the light side, 5 to 10 miles per hour. 55 Jamestown, also 55 in the Devil's Lake. 59, the relative warm spot in the Detroit Lake. Satellite, hardly a cloud in the sky. A few of those up in far northern portions of Minnesota. We'll see clouds increase from west to east as we go through the day today with a chance for increasing showers and storms from west to east as well. Right now, all the green you see on the radar, that just a mix of... Uh, interference with our radar, but there are the shower and storms well off to our west. They'll make their way across the state as we head through the day today across the rest of the U.S. A lot of rain down in the southern plains where they don't need it. A few showers and storms in the northeast and a few shower and storms down into the Gulf. For us, we've got that chance for some showers and storms later on today, and those will move on across the region. Widely scattered to isolated shower and storms. Don't cancel the outdoor plans. Just keep in mind you might have an isolated shower or storm late end of the day. Overnight tonight, a mild night dropping down into the 50s and 60s with a continued isolated chance for a shower or storm as we head through tomorrow morning. And then as we head through much of the day tomorrow, it looks like things will dry on out and heat on up well into the 80s, hanging on to some 70s in northern Minnesota with a mix of cloud and sunshine by late in the day. As we head through the next seven days, today, some low 80s tomorrow. A chance for an isolated shower storm, especially in the first half of the day. Better chances for shower and storms Thursday and Friday. Some of those could be strong and perhaps severe. Keep it tuned to the latest forecast. Right now, though, Saturday, Sunday, hot, dry, sunny. Temperatures in the low 90s. That's a look at your weather. Time now for a look at your traffic with Al Ahmed. Good morning, Al. Good morning, Robert. Good morning, everyone. Heavy traffic on northbound Interstate 29, particularly through the work zone, which stretches from 32nd Avenue south to 12th Avenue north. Pretty much bumper to bumper, travel speeds through there. Folks, most folks are following the 40 mile an hour posted speed limit, which is a good deal because you got people standing right next to the roadway. Uh, Interstate 94 traffic is fairly heavy at this early hour as well. Uh, definitely picking up, no two ways about that. And if you're headed into downtown Fargo and downtown Moorhead, you're going to have to deal with a eastbound freight train that's headed your way as well. Lots more going on. Get back again here about uh, 725 or so. Drive carefully this morning. Alamut Valley Today traffic. 
653 now on this Tuesday morning, turning back to your news headlines, and we have some sad news to report about a colleague at KFGO Radio and someone that many people in the Valley will definitely recognize his name and voice. Longtime weatherman Terry Spees passed away last night after suffering a heart attack. Terry was a Hope, North Dakota native and started working at KFGO in 1997 after a lengthy career at the National Weather Service. A lot of listeners know his voice from KFGO's extensive flood coverage along with his daily reports. Plans to redevelop the Fergus Falls Regional Treatment Center have stopped after the Fergus Falls City Council voted unanimously last night to terminate negotiations with developer Ray Willey. According to the Fergus Falls Daily Journal, city officials say the deal breaker was giving money to the developer up front without getting any guarantees. The city spent more than a year working to try and reach an agreement with Willie and save the century-old asylum known as the Kirkbride Building from demolition. A group of 15 North Dakota National Guard soldiers who've been serving overseas since September are scheduled to return home to North Dakota a little bit later tonight. The soldiers are assigned to the Fargo Base 231st Brigade Support Battalion Logistical Support Element. The soldiers who arrived at Fort Hood, Texas earlier this month 12 will fly back to Fargo tonight at 8.30 and 3 will fly to Bismarck at 8. The public is invited to show their support for the soldiers at their arrival locations. North Dakota officials are trying to pinpoint the source of three E. coli cases in children and believe there may be a link to animals at the Red River Valley Fair in West Fargo. People who attended the fair and are experiencing abdominal cramps, nausea, vomiting or diarrhea are encouraged to contact the North Dakota Health Department. Now, health experts remind people that if you ever touch an animal, you should wash your hands immediately afterward. E. coli can also be contracted by exposure to undercooked meat and contaminated food. The symptoms of it can show up up to 10 days from the time of infection. Clay County officials are hoping to break ground on a new $30 million jail in early 2017. Plans to replace the current facility in Moorhead are not officially drawn up, but should be finished within the next 10 months. An exact location is still undecided, but decision makers are leaning toward building south of the current facility. The new jail will include 188 beds. Three people were hurt when the Jeep they were in lost a tire and rolled over on Highway 10 near New York Mills, Minnesota last night. The Minnesota State Patrol says the SUV landed on a guardrail. The driver, 36-year-old Christopher Mueller of St. Cloud, the passenger, 13-year-old Bryce Mueller of St. Cloud, and 37-year-old Melissa Matfeld of Purim were all hurt, but deputies say that their injuries don't appear to be life-threatening. Well, it was a bit of a close call last night for a Moorhead man when his car was hit by a train. Police say he failed to yield while taking a turn at a South Moorhead crossing near the high school and crashed into a moving train. Investigators said the train was not going fast and the driver of the car was able to walk away without injury. Young adults in the Valley are getting a helping hand with counseling, housing and schooling. It's all through a program called Youth Works, and that is where we find the Valley Today's Christy Larson this morning. Christy? Good morning, Kyle and Lisa. That's right. We wanted to just remind you, first of all, what some of those programs are that they're doing for teens right here throughout the Valley. So we have Jessica Fleck here with us. So let's talk about a couple of them real quick. You do a street outreach. We do street outreach. We do runaway prevention and sheltering services. We have transitional housing for 18 to 22 year olds. We have individual and family counseling at no cost to individuals in the community. Um, and you know, we can't do everything in our agency and we sure feel like we do a lot, but uh, we're lucky to have wonderful partners in the community that we can refer out to, to make sure that the youth that we serve get every that they need um, and we're really lucky to be in such a great community to have great agencies to refer to and partners with us so and again we were talking about people donating I mean they can donate hygiene products they can donate clothes they can donate furniture but also they can donate money and you guys really make it go that much farther because of some yeah. grants you have yep we uh, receive four federal grants um, and we also receive United Way dollars and anytime that we get those monetary dollars in we can double or triple that money um, going back into our programs and so it's so helpful to have those those dollars available so we can get those grants because sometimes there is a requirement that we do have some dollars to put into that grant too so um, every little bit helps. <laughs> and those dollars too, you guys can choose which program needs a little bit more extra assistance. Yeah. And we do also have a link on valleynewslive.com on our hot button on how you can help. And again, Kyle and Lisa, it's just one of the great things that's happening right here in the Valley and Youth Works is located right off University Drive, 317 University Drive, if you do need to come and stop by and get some help.
Christy Larson reporting live for us this morning. Thank you, Christy. A popular restaurant is giving away food. Today only, Applebee's will allow customers to test out two new sampler plates for free. One is its sriracha shrimp. Mm. The other, churro s'mores. Both sound yummy. Well, anything free sounds yummy. <laughs> Applebee's estimates it'll give away two million of the dishes in an effort to get guests to try them and other items on the menu. I know where I'm going for lunch. Anyone? Anyone want to go for lunch today? You go to Applebee's I'll buy. Like every day. <laughs> I love Applebee's. Let's get our answer now to our question of the morning on Facebook. 15% of women admit that they've done this on their lunch break at Applebee's. No, they're not going to Applebee's. The answer, go home and change their outfits. Seriously? I'm going to go home and change at lunch. You know, I'm going to go home and Two, three outfits per day. you got to get them in somehow. Yeah. <laughs> All, right. All right. Nice day out there as we head through the uh, day today. We see lots of sunshine. It cooled this morning. But we're going to see a quick warm up with lots of sunshine right now. All in the 50s. Hardly a cloud in the sky. Increasing clouds from west to east today with a chance for a few isolated showers and storms late today into tonight and early tomorrow. Nothing doing in terms of precip on the radar right now. All that green, just a little interference. 82 today. Mid 80s tomorrow with that slight chance for a few shower and storms. Better chance for shower and storms show up, especially late Thursday and on into Thursday night. Some of those storms will likely be severe. Upper 80s Thursday and Friday. And Bedeau's favorite temperatures, some 90s. I as like we head it through hot. Saturday and I Sunday. I do. Looking forward to that. Looks yeah. like a great weekend. Yeah. Thanks for waking up with the Valley today. More local news and weather for you right here in just 25 minutes. Have a great Tuesday, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow morning. Take care.